I am the minister of Canton Grace Fellowship, in which we started a little over a year ago. And we've had many of your pastors, uh, Ray and, and uh, Keith and Richard and Alex, from here alone came by and, and did some teaching and preaching in our assembly. But we're located in the Northeast Ohio area. If you're big football fans, that's where the Football Hall of Fame is. So that's a, that could be a plus or a minus for, for non-spiritual people. But the, it is a, it's a wonderful place to be, and, and we're excited about our assembly. How many people's here from the radio ministry has ever heard Brother Richard on the radio and, and understood some things? Very good. Uh, we have him on daily Bible time, uh, Monday through Friday, in the Canton area, WMPQ. And we're getting a wonderful response from that. And uh, so if, uh, if you never heard that, you can listen to it on WMPQ at 1015 on the Internet or in the area. So that, that's a good program to support. Amen. Um, this morning we're going to be talking about fact, faith, fruit, and filling. Let's go in a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for... The many things that you've given us, we thank you for the word of God that we have in our possessions. We thank you for the many faithful men and uh, ladies that are here today, the brethren. We ask that uh, as we go through this lesson and throughout the day that we be focused on the task at hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I know last night, uh, Keith had been preaching the last couple days on the grace living and all. That's a wonderful thing to know, isn't it? Amen. It really is because there's one thing you can know about about understanding dispensationalism, that's a plus. You have to have that. That's the basis. But to un understand grace living, grace, grace giving, if you will, you have to get in the Word of God. And Julie asked me this, uh, I think last night, she asked me if, we're going, if I'm going to teach on Romans. Well, that's what we're teaching at our assembly back, back, back in Ohio. Uh, we started that some many weeks ago, and we're just in verse 10. If if, if you're familiar with Roman study and Grace School of the Bible. But uh, that's exciting to know that the, they want to hear that. But this morning we're going to talk on fact. What is a fact? Anything done or that comes to pass, an act, a deed, witnesses are introduced into court to prove a fact, aren't they? Do you know that to deny a fact, to deny a fact knowingly, is to lie. Did you know that? So we're going to talk about the fact. Well, one thing we got the fact is, a, uh, is the Bible. We have a Bible, don't we? I have a Bible. Do you have a Bible? You know it's an act of God. You, did you know that? It's an act of God, not that he's causing weather. People call that acts, don't they? But this is an act from God he, in a way that he spoke a book, didn't he? Go to Ezekiel chapter 2. He spoke a book, and he gave us words or scriptures. It's a fact. I started to write all these verses down, because I'll spoil our group back home. I'll put the scriptures on the board, the board because sometimes my, my English is not correct. So if you wonder what I'm saying, I think they sell these tapes <laughs> next door. So, In Ezekiel chapter 2... On our way out here, we stopped at, what's that little town, Valpari? Yes, and stopped at a little McDonald's. And it was busy, wasn't it? It was, it was just two cash, cash boxes. And uh, we're standing there, and here comes this big, tall guy. I mean, he was huge. He's towered that much taller than myself. And he was on a crutch. And he walks right in, right in front of me. So we're waiting on food, and I haven't ordered yet, and I walked up right behind him. And when he went back, he bumped me. He said, oh, do you want to dance? Like that, and I said, no, I see that you already have your partner, you know, a crutch. And he goes, you're invading my space. And he says, anything in my arm length is my space, okay? And I said, well, take out that cash register where I can get up there and order my food. And he goes... Are you from England? And I said, No. I said, I'm from Ohio. And he goes, Why don't you go back there? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, And then he goes, They say that man 
couldn't fly. You know, Ohio's got a coin on the back, first in flight. No, no, that, that's North Carolina, but, you know, uh, John Glenn, the Wright brothers and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, this is where the feelings is going to come in. What Brother, brother Keith has been talking about all day. I had to show grace. But anyway, I didn't back down, and I moved over and ordered my food. But, you know, it's, it's strange. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Verse 2, And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. God speaks real words. Look at the chapter 3, verse 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, get, go get thee into the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. God spoke words, didn't he? You have to believe that. That's a fact. And he spoke to real men, didn't he? He didn't just speak it to just anybody. He spoke to men. He spoke to Moses, didn't he? Noah, Daniel, Job, and so on. And Ezekiel 14, 14 will tell you that. Go to Psalms chapter 12. I appreciate the, the, the men and women at the Canton Grace Fellowship this morning that's kind of holding down the fort. So just keep them in prayer. Psalms 12, verses 6 and 7, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as, as silver tried in a furnace of the earth, purified how many times? Seven, seven times. Seven is the number of what? Okay, verse 7. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation for how long? Ever. God said he's going to preserve his word, didn't he? A fact. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16, 17. Some scriptures is given by inspiration of God. How many? All, All scriptures are given by inspiration of God. I'm glad you're awake this morning. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into how many good works? All. Now, how much scriptures are given by God? All. How do you get profit out of this? You just spend the Bible and... Poke your finger at it. Second Timothy 2.15. This is our little saying back, back in Ohio is the fact that we study the whole Bible according to 2 Timothy 3.16.17. The Bible's own way. The Bible has a way to study it, doesn't it? 2 Timothy 2.15. I'm sure many of you heard this time and time again, but I'm not going to get away from it. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto who? God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, if all scriptures are given by inspiration of God and is profitable, how much is the Bible for us? All of it. But how much is it to you? Some of it, right? Okay, some of it. I was going to draw a Bible up here, but I can't use the chalk. I like the easy marker. But you can use your own Bible. If, if, grab grab uh, Romans through Philemon. We do it this way. Romans through Philemon. And get the book of Acts. You should be looking your Bible like this, right? You've got the book of Acts and Romans through Philemon. Anything to the left of Acts is what? Word of God, isn't it? But it's what we call what? Times past. Okay, then you have the book of Acts. That's a transitional book. Amen? Amen? Then you have Romans through Philemon. That's what we call but now, according to Ephesians chapter th uh, 2, verse 13. Then anything to the right of that is what's called ages to come. So you can use your own Bible on that, plus the charts. That's very helpful. 
But in fact that we have a Bible, we have a completed Word of God, don't we? Okay? We have a completed Word of God. And in that purpose of God's Word, you can understand what God is doing in the heaven and earth. It's a fact that we have that. That's a dispensational approach, many of you know. And I think Keith might have touched on some mad dog situations or, you know, things like that in past. You have to be a, a dispensationalist, don't you, to understand the Bible. And that's not a bad word. It's a Bible, God-breathed word. And I was talking with a, a Baptist preacher at a, at a function at, at, at Heritage School, and the fact that I asked him about dispensationalism, and he looked at me, he said, that's not really a bad word. People just don't understand it. You know, and, and when my wife had a devotion there, she drags that eight-foot chart that you sell here into that school, didn't she, Howard? Into that school, and Howard asked her, how are you going to teach that in 10 minutes when it took us over a year to get through it? Yeah, and she laid it out, and that Baptist wife, wife of the Baptist preacher, she knew she was a dispensationalist. That is a good thing. Agree or disagree? Agree. It's a good thing. But what, uh, what Keith is sharing with us more, you have to go a little bit further than that. You have to live the grace life, okay? It's a fact. Now, there's good news in the Bible, aren't there? There's good news in times past. There's good news in but now. There's good news in ages to come, believe it or not, okay? There's a gospel of the kingdom that was preached in time past. Was that good news? And where is their eternal life at? And ages have come. Their salvation, their hope lies over here in a kingdom on earth. Okay? And all of our lives, we've been taught, many of us, there's very few probably been, been come out of the womb eating and breathing grace truth. Many of us came up in traditions, didn't we? Okay? And we can understand some things. When we go against that tradition, it don't make good friends, does it? You know, it causes enemies. It, it causes families to split. You know, my mom at one time, she said, don't talk Bible in my house no more. And the only thing I want to do with joy is share that. But today, what well, today there's a gospel that saves us, isn't it? Amen. Is it the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There's a gospel today, and it's a fact that saves us, okay? It's a fact. 1 Corinthians 15. Moreover, brethren, I like this. Moreover, what he talked about before about tongues. Moreover, what he talked about prophecy. Moreover than anything that he talked before in the prior books, chapters, he says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you also have received, and wherein you stand. He preached to you. You received it. And what are you going to do? You're going to stand in it. Verse 2, by which also you are saved. If you repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Is that what that says? No, if you keep in memory what I preached in you unless you believe in vain. Are they vain beliefs? Many of you know your social security number, addresses and phone numbers. You do. You don't think nothing twice. What you also should keep up here is what? Look at the next verses. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received. Where did Paul receive this? On the road to Damascus, right? How that Christ died for our sins according to Scriptures, and He was buried and He rose again the third day according to Scriptures. That's what you keep up here in memory, okay? Keep reading. And that he was seen as, seen as Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen above 500 brethren at once, from whom the greater part remains unto this present, but if some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, and then all of the apostles. At last of all, he was seen of Paul, right? As one born out of due time. That's a fact. Okay? I'm sure none of you dispute this, but that's a fact. 
A lot of people would dispute that because they want to mix this with some other gospel over here. The fact is we have the scriptures, do we not? And the gospel for the day. That's a great start. Okay? That's a great start. We got the word and we got the gospel. That's good news. You can stay right there all day long. But we're not. Next one we're going to look at is faith. Okay? Faith is something to persuade, to draw towards anything, to believe, to obey the truth of God that has been revealed. You have to believe something. You have to obey something. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, Romans 10, 17, so so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. In order to have faith, the faith of God, what do you have to do? You have to hear the facts, the words, the scriptures, okay? Do you hear Sports Illustrated magazines? How about Fox News? Yeah? No. How about Dr. Phil? How about Oprah? She's big around here, isn't she? You know, but people look at those things and hear those things and believe it, don't they? Okay? You have to hear the Word of God to have faith in the Word of God. I had faith in many things out there, what I listened to and, and, and took on in my life. There's a trucking manual that is a law. It's that thick, much like Keith's regulations for officiating. But it's that thick and it governs the trucking industry. That's a Bible. That's facts. And if I hear that, then I'm going to obey that and trust that. But we're talking about spiritual things. We're talking about what God has given us. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses, um, go to verse 12 that we should be the praise of his glory, who first trusted in who? Christ. In whom? Who's that? Christ. Ye also trusted. After that ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your? Of whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You heard it. What did you hear? The gospel of your salvation. Did you see it? No, you trust it, you took it on faith, okay? I love when we was doing the little small camps and stuff, and, and you explain this verse to the little ones, and you take like a pin top. Many of you might have done this and say, this is you. The minute that you trust Christ Jesus, died for your sins and buried and rose again, he seals you, now get out of it. And you see them little hands do this, and they're prying, they're wanting, you know, trying to get out. They can't do it. You pick somebody like you, you break my fingers, you know. But you know what I'm saying? You can't get out of this, okay? Speaking of fingers, I might tell you a little story after a while. But, I don't, but anyway, you trust it. You heard it. You're sealed. You can't get out of it, okay? What's the gospel again? Christ died for us, right? What do you trust? You died for your sins. And Hebrews eleven six says, without faith it is impossible to what? Please God. You have to have faith in that. And putting your faith in the Word, in the Scriptures, then you have to become obedient to the doctrine. Okay? You heard it. You trust it. You're going to obey it. In Romans chapter 1, there's Julie's Roman verse. Romans chapter 1, verse 5. Romans chapter 1, verse 5 says, By whom we have received grace and apostleship for the obedience to the faith among all nations for His name. The faith that, is, that he's talking about is the body of doctrine that we believe. Okay, We take that up on faith. Not just any doctrine, is it? In times past, wasn't there doctrine taught there? You better believe there was. And they took it up on faith. 
the doctrine that's set forth today in Paul's epistle, Paul calls it sound doctrine. It's sound. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 5, it says, Examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Okay? Keith and I talked quite a bit. He, he mentioned something the other night that, which is not true. But anyway, he says, I talk to him every day. Well, that's not true. I talk to him actually once a week, but it carries over for days because I'm dropping his call. He's dropping my call. But anyway, I enjoy talking to many of you guys and gals. I, I really do. I, I treasure the friendship. The technology we have today is awesome, and I use it. Believe me. The basis of salvation for every age is what? Faith. Keith? The basis of salvation in every age is the blood of Christ. Okay? The means of salvation in every age is always faith. The object of faith is always God. The content of faith it always depends on a particular revelation of God was pleased to give at a certain time. Abraham, faith, God gave him something. David, Moses, David, John the Baptist, Lord Jesus Christ, the twelve, God, God gave them something. They took it up on faith. Paul, the apostle today, is faith. And they just come, it's going to be faith. There's faith all through the Bible, aren't they? That's what you have to do. You have to obey the doctrine for us today. Okay, You can jump over in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John... And obey that all you want to. But what benefit are you going to have out of that? It's going to just call, cause headaches, isn't it? Next thing we look at is fruit. After you get the facts and the faith, this is the product that you want to produce. Okay? And go to Matthew chapter 3. Matthew is a book of what? Where do you find Matthew? In times past, don't you? Old Testament. Matthew chapter 3. Fruit is something that you should produce. And it's all through the Bible. It's just not today. It was in times past too. And in and, and, and Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist comes on the scene and he's baptizing in the wilderness. And, so, uh, and Pharisees and Sadducees come in verse 7. He says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits of repentance. He's wanting to see some fruits from their facts, if you will, from their faith. Verse 10, it says, And now also the axe is laid upon the roots of the tree. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is what? Hewed down and cast into the fire. That's a war term, by the way, that you find in Deuteronomy. When you go warring against some, a, a, a city... You don't cut down trees that's good for fruit and meat. You cut down trees for bulwarks. Okay, you use them. But if it's not producing good fruit, what do you do? You cut it down. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 21. What fruit have you then in those things, wherefore ye are now ashamed? For the ends of those things is... Before you was saved, that's the type of fruit we was doing. But in Romans chapter 6, it deals with the dead. You're dead to what? Sin. Sin no longer dwell. You, know, you have dominion over you. So in a fact, if you're producing a bad fruit... You can hew it down. You know, you can get rid of it. In verse um, 21, 22, it says, But now something's changed, hasn't it? 
But now being made free from sin and become the servants of God, you have the, your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Now that you understand that you're dead to sin, you can start producing good fruit. Now that you know that you have the fact and faith, you can start producing good fruit. Next verse, for the wages of sin is... Do you really want your wages? Think about that. Many of us work, and we want a paycheck every week. And we want our wages, and sometimes more. Don't we? I mean, we want... You, I deserve... Well, you really don't deserve that. You work for that. You don't want these wages, okay? You want eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, Go to chapter 7. Chapter 7 deals with you're dead to the law. You're dead to sin. You're dead to the law, okay? In verse uh, 4, it says, um, Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. How are you dead to the law? spiritually through the body of Christ, okay, that you should be married to another, even to him who has raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. It's a product what we're producing. That's now. The next verse is before. It says, For when we were in the flesh, the, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto God. There's good fruit, bad fruit. You know, today you're saved. There's still good fruit and bad fruit, aren't they? They really are. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. But now, excuse me, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now that you understand, you can start producing good fruit. Hey, in times past, I produced bad fruit. I really did. And you know something? That crop is cut down. That crop's grown up. It's gone. And we tell our group all the time, I don't care what you did in times past. It's what you're doing right now. Okay? That makes the difference. And don't please a man. You please the one who died for you. Amen? Ephesians chapter 5. Now you've got some wonderful news that you can go on and live that grace life and get into it. I believe it says... As the Word of God is laid out like it is, Romans through Philemon, as Paul laid them out for the body of Christ, and as we go through, our, as he grew, we grow. You understand what I'm saying? As Paul grew, you grew. We grow. We grow together. In verse 9 it says, uh, For the fruit of the Spirit is in, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, providing, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Once again, this fruit is not peaches and pears. I asked Keith one time, I said, what color is an orange? He goes, orange. You know, they're green on the tree, aren't they? At least I thought they was. He said they're orange. I don't know. He lives down there amongst them. He probably sees them every day. You know, I only see them in a supermarket. We was in Virginia for the holidays, and Sherry's brother Bobby had this big fruit bowl, big oranges like this. My sugar was dropping a little bit, and I've seen that, and I'm going after that. So he said, Edward, you don't want that fruit. It's bad. I'm like, it looks good. And I pop me a hole in it, start squeezing the juice out of it. About halfway through it, I was going, and her uh, uncle Junior, he was looking at me. He goes, he's waiting to see what I was doing because he looked like he wanted one. I said, this is bad. But he had a good, nice box of oranges over here. You know, there's good fruit, bad fruit. The fruit in our grace life is what's coming forth so others can see. Okay? It's what people want, what you want. They see what you have, and they want that. And that's what we should be striving for. And it's Christ in us. Amen?
The next thing is feelings. Feelings. Not feelings. Feelings. Even though if you put all these together, it would make a good feeling, pie feeling, wouldn't it not? But it's feelings. Feelings is one of the five senses. By this, we can feel what we know what the body is hard, soft, cold, hot. Okay? What is smooth and rough. It's feelings. Excitement. Emotions we can feel. When you're sitting beside your wife, many of you, and you touch her hand and stuff and you start rubbing it, she starts doing this, don't she? You know, she starts being a little emotional. Okay? What we laid out so far when it comes to feelings... You should understand some things. That you never let this run your spiritual life. There's many churches out there today are starting churches, big churches, doing this first. And then faith and then fact. And then they want to see produce fruit. This is why this is last in your spiritual life. God said through Paul... In 2 Timothy 2, 7, it says, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in how many things? All things. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. You're already there? Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 says, This I say therefore and testify the Lord that Ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alien from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts, who who being past feeling, feeling, have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Their understanding, your feelings, understand. You're going to understand some things. Okay? Read verse 22 and 23, 28. But now something's changed. That, that, yet, that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Okay? And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now we can understand some things. You and I are saved, and we walk by faith, not by what? Sight. We're not, or feelings. And once, I, once again, I, I mentioned something about the majority of the churches. They put that first. Whatever you want to do, we'll make a provision. You know, when we first moved up to Ohio, we, we helped start a church with a, a, a couple there, and, and, uh, and they was big on some feelings. They like music. My wife loves music. I mean, she really does, and I watch her, and she's up singing with them and, you know, just getting into music, and I'm standing there like a knot on a log because I, that's, I like music. Don't get me wrong, but that's not going to drive me. So when the word is preached, everybody goes, you know, I'm the opposite. I may not pronounce words correctly, but I want to be a word man. And this is what drives me. And that's why it's first. I've got facts. And she wouldn't wouldn't understand some things. And after a while, she does understand some things through the obedience. We're, We're made up of spirit and soul and body, okay? She's very submissive, by the way. We're made up of spirit, soul, and body, right? Or is it body, soul, and spirit? What is it? Spirit, soul, body. Made up three things. Our emotions is connected to our spiritual life. Okay? And that's what should drive us. But... The spirit in you, who is it? That's what drives us. Okay? In Philippians chapter 3. It's 
says in verse 3, it says, For we are the circumcision which, which wor- worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in, the, in Christ Jesus, who have no confidence in the flesh. Galatians 5, 16 says, So this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you're saved, according to the... Well, I know it's talking about sinful flesh, okay? But once again, those emotions can drive you, can't they? You know, that guy, that guy that towered above me at that McDonald's the other morning... I knew where my emotions should be, and I, I could, it could got ugly, and I could be wearing a, a crutch around my head this morning, you know, <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, I backed out, and, you know, just, I stood my ground and looked at him, you know, I'm not, and when he mentioned about space, I asked him, I said, you know what space cushion is? I said, you can't control what's behind you, but you can control what's in front of you. You know, they teach that when driving, if you want to drive in one-on-one. You can't control what's behind you, so you leave a cushion in front of you. I didn't leave that cushion, by the way. I, I was there. But a lost man, according to Ephesians chapter 1, go there. Ephesians chapter 1. A lost man is cut away from the Spirit and serves what? That's right. This is a lost man. He's cut away right here. Okay? From God. It says, And ye have quickened, and you, and you have he quickened, and were dead to trespasses and sins. You know what God is doing today? God's making dead people alive. Amen. You know, and that's wonderful. Amen. But they got to hear it. they got to hear the facts. Okay? But a lost man, when, when people, you talk to people all the time, I'm, I'm sure. And they say, well, I pray to God and this and this and this. You ever ask them what God they pray to? You know, and I just ask them. Because I believe that until you trust the gospel that saves you today, your spirit is dead to God and he don't hear you. And you gotta, you gotta, they got to hear that Christ died for them and was buried and rose again, and that when he quickens that spirit, then a saved man is cut away where? That don't drive him no more. That don't drive him. A lost man, the motivation in life begins in the body, and that runs his whole life. I'm a prime example. I, I love things. But I've learned some things now that that being saved, that my spiritual man dominates my soul. So does yours. And that's where the grace life comes in at. Keith's been sharing some wonderful things this week. I heard him Friday night on Pow Talk. I got home long long enough to tune it in, so I didn't get to hear him the other morning. but, But the thing is that... I know time's getting away, but we're starting a new year, and hasn't this past year really flown by? You ever thought about that? This age we're in, it is moving, and we don't have much time. You know, you don't have much time to reach your brothers and sisters or your mom or daughter and stuff like that. Many of them may be living with us. And we think, oh, we got another day. We got another day. You don't have time. I thought I had plenty of time to reach my dad. Anarism took him out like that. It don't, it don't take long. So I ask my prayer for you for the 2007, if you will, is that uh, you'll take the facts, you go on faith, you produce good fruit, and you don't let your emotions run your spiritual life You let Christ in you. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this time you've given us. We ask that uh, once again as we go throughout this day and start a new year that uh, we'll be excited that you are in us. And if there's one out there today, Lord, that's never fully trusted or understand that you did die, not just for many, but you died for every one of us. And it's by faith that we trust that and trust that alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.